Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and in today's video, this will actually be the third video in a series I'm doing all about working with dates and calculating different things with dates in Excel. And so for today's example, I'm going to be showing how to prorate a bonus based on time in two different positions. This may also help with any type of prorating that you need to do based on length of time or days in a job or in a location. It, oh, real quick, if you want to catch up on the first two videos I did on working with dates, I'll link to it here. I have both videos here in a post. If you want to learn how to calculate tenure, so how long somebody's been in a job, or just different ways you can work with months using formulas in Excel. And so those are good ones to check out too. But for this example, I'm going to be using the variable compensation bonus template. I've already got this populated with some example data, but we are we're going to be going a little bit deeper into how to prorate somebody's bonus based on using something called eligible earnings instead of current annual salary. It should be documented in an employee bonus plan document how prorations will be handled. So just because I'm calculating it a certain way in this example doesn't mean that's the way that every single bonus plan should be calculated. It really is based on the plan document. So this template was set up to where you just paste in the current annual salary. So this would be if the bonus plan is based on a snapshot of where the employee is at as of a certain date. And if I scroll over here, I already do have a proration calculation over here in this last column. And this is for prorating based on date of hire. And it's really only prorating it at the month level. I'm going to go ahead and update this plan year to be last year. So if you're doing a proration with a normal calendar year, you want a full year of data for this to work. And you'll see that once I updated that, now everybody is set to 12 full months. And you'll also see I'm using the dated if formula, which I covered in one of the first videos to calculate. We would need a date of hire during this year for the proration to take effect. But going back to the example, we are looking at prorating someone who had a change in position. So that's going to prorate based on date of hire. But for this example, I'm taking Marshmallow Peep, the employee name, and if we paste in their current salary, they're at 80. But if we go back and look at the previous year, they had a promotion about halfway through the year, June 1st, they changed from 70 to 80,000. We could also say that their bonus target changed from a 5% target to an 8 or 10% target when they received the promotion. And so that needs to be figured into the calculation as well. Let me just paste below just to get the visual. We want to calculate their bonus for January through the full month of May. June 1st is the effective date of the new salary, so the full month of June. But we could also have a June 15th, and then this calculation I'm about to show you will work for dates like that as well. So this is an annual pay rate. So rather than calculating what they earned each month, which you could do, I'm going to be looking at calculating the days. So we know there's 365 days in a year. And so we can definitely use that. So real quick, I'm just going to do some calculations. I have the start date January 1st of 2024, since we're using the entire calendar year, and we want the end date of when their previous pay rate ended. So it actually, if it's effective June 1st, the old pay rate 
last date was June 1st minus one. It was May 31st. We could just type in May 31st or if I do equal this date of last increase minus one, it's going to calculate June 1st minus one day. And so that gives me May 31st. And so it'll update. Excel will know if it's a 28 day month or a 30 day month. So that's helpful. And then from there, we just need to calculate the number of days that we had. So we'll just do the end date minus the start date and we get 151 days. And we know there's 365 days unless there's a leap year. We could test that out. Let me just label this previous pay and then new pay. The new pay rate is effective the date that we have up here, June 1st. And then the end date is going to be the end of the year. So we know that's going to be December 31st. And then I can just drag this formula down, which is subtracting end date minus start date. So if we take end date minus start date, 365 days. Now we can, we have the days in previous pay and new pay rate. Now we can get a percentage here. We can just do the number of days divided by 365. And then let's format that as a percentage and then I'm going to do the same thing for the new pay and the total comes out to 41% towards previous pay and new pay 58% adding these together should equal up to 100% and it does. But how do we actually implement this into our bonus calculation, right? So now that I have a percentage, I can do another calculation. So if the bonus target stays the same, you can use this template and just instead of current annual salary, you would put in the eligible earnings. If you have a bonus target change, then you need to do some extra calculations for that. So if I'm just doing the eligible earnings and then plugging that in, I would actually put up here the percentage of previous pay, and then we'll just do it equal to the calculation that we put there. Keep in mind that this is an annual pay rate, but that's what we're using to calculate the bonus percentage is a percent of the annual. So I'm going to take new pay times the new pay rate. And then let's do the format painter. I'm going to update the format. And so then you can just simply add these two together for total eligible earnings. Previous plus the new and we're coming out to about 75,863. That sounds about right because it's almost halfway between 70 and 80,000. So if the bonus were to stay at a 5% target, that's gonna be at the new pay rate, 80,000 times 5% would give them a $4,000 bonus. The previous pay rate times 5% annually, they were eligible for this bonus target. But now we can take the eligible earnings times bonus target, and that is giving us the prorated amount, which is right there in the middle between 3,793. If the dates were to change, if I change it to June 15th, let's see if all the formulas update of 2024, then it updates to, to 45 and 54. So just slightly updates that amount. If they were majority of the year at the previous rate and didn't get the promotion until October 1st, 24, then it's going to be more heavily weighted towards the previous amount. So 
that's if the bonus target stays the same. You can paste this eligible earnings into the current annual salary. Let me paste values to get the formulas out just so you could see the template. So I could paste for Marshmallow. We pasted in the eligible earnings and then, oh, it's going to calculate based on, say, 100% of target and, and we're getting a 5%. But the rest of these formulas are taking into account performance rating and company financial results that are you're able to set up in the bonus key. So that there's another video that explains all about that, how that works. But this 626, we can know that it's it is prorating their time in each position if they have the same bonus target. That will work. 3626. Yeah, it's the exact same number. If the bonus target changes, now we need to consider that into our calculation. So let me just, let me insert a row right here and insert two rows. Oops. Okay, just to put it right underneath, then we're going to have, we're going to have a different bonus target. If the bonus changed, I'm just going to put it bonus target chain. So if it changed, we need to calculate what the actual bonus target. We can take the annual salary. So current annual is actually the new because remember this promotion happened in the past. New salary and their new target. That'll give us the 8% bonus target. So their bonus target went from, the amount went from 4,000 to 6,400 when it went from 5% to 8%. And then the previous is just gonna be the same. It's still gonna be what it was, which was using the old bonus target. But I'm just gonna move it down here so we can have it in the same row. So now we're prorating the bonus target we can just prorate the bonus target. And so the previous pay right here, 74%, oh, this is when we changed them. They had their promotion in October. So 74% of the year they were targeted, their bonus target was 3,500. And then 25% of the year, their bonus target increased to 6,400. And then from there, we can add those two together. Let me just format those. And if we add them together, now we're getting their prorated bonus change, which it is higher than what we did over here, this 33,600, because we're taking into account they have a higher bonus target. They had went from 5% to 8%. So that is what their target would be. And then this file has corporate achievement set at 100%, but you could have different financial results if you're only paying out at 85% of the targets. You could change that here. If you're giving different percentages based on performance rating, and things like that. That's something else to consider in your calculation. I hope that helps explain how I would prorate based on a time and position or time. You could be prorating rent for rental property or, or anything else. Let me know what other ways you are looking to do this proration. You can find that HR template in the section for timesavingtemplates.com and go to shop in human resource spreadsheets and you'll find that variable compensation template there and I'll also link to it. And we also have some free resources here at timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources. Definitely check out the other free resources we have and we also have other other templates and other video series. And don't forget, I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using your Excel spreadsheets. And I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.